Uh, but but uh, what I want to talk to you about is the book we have as a required reading today, which is uh, Drucker's The Effective Executive. Now, I hope all of you began the process of reading it. This is the paperback edition. I hope all of you have bought it. I want you to keep it forever. I want you to mark like January of each year. I want you to take it back up for at least four or five years and reread it. Now you may say, why is Gingrich being nutty about this? I read this book for the first time in, uh, and you're going to have to really cue me on this because I'm just going to go rolling for a while because this is so important. I read this book for the first time, I believe, in, in 1969 when I was in Brussels working on my dissertation. And it shaped my entire life. In the first place, really good books lead you to people. In my case, Drucker led me to Alfred Sloan, and he led me to, uh, who was the, crea the creator of General Motors in its modern form. And he led me to George Marshall, who's the creator of the American Army in its modern form. And he said, these were two of the three greatest management leaders of the 20th century. Theodore Vail is the other one. I, I have not read much on Vail. But I found Drucker himself came to the US, was actually a philosophy professor, came to the US. He'd also done ba merchant banking in, in, in Vienna. And he began writing on management. And then in one of those great moments, and, and you'll hear me talk a lot about the idea that life is lived organically by bonds of people. That is, if you look at great NFL coaches, you'll find out they often studied under great F NFL coaches. You can actually find sort of schools of coaching. Well, the same thing is true of learning. Drucker was asked by Alfred Sloan, the man who created General Motors, to come and spend a year in the modern, he took over a company that was bankrupt and rebuilt it, or was on the verge of bankruptcy and rebuilt it. Sloan said to him, I want you to come and spend a year inside General Motors and explain to us how we operate. It was the greatest industrial corporation in the world. He wrote a book, I think it came out the year I was born in 1943, called The Concept of the Corporation, which is, in terms of just reading a great work on management and history, is extraordinary. He begins the book by saying, I'm a little bit like the scholar of China who found he was almost ready to write, and then there was another century he hadn't studied. And one day decided that he better start writing because there were always going to be more things about China than he could ever learn. And if he didn't stop in ignorance and start writing, he'd never get anything written. So he said, I, I confess up front, General Motors is so complex and so extraordinary, I don't really understand all of it. And this book is simply my effort to explain what I learned in one year. Which to me was a very helpful way of reminding us we're never really experts. We never really know. There's always something more to learn. And then he outlined how General Motors worked in the early 1940s. From that, he began developing his approach to management. And Drucker's central argument is that the, that the key to, remember that in his lifetime, the central challenge to democracy is to totalitarianism. Whereas in Washington and Lincoln's lifetimes, it was, it was aristocratic kingship. Well, kingships were gone, basically. But the new threat of the 20th century was that the way you organize humans is you have a secret police state with a totalitarian leader. Mao Zedong in China, Joseph, Joe Stalin in, and Joseph Stalin in Russia, Adolf Hitler in Germany, Benito Mussolini. And to some extent, Imperial Japan, which was a mixed system with, a, with an emperor, but with a, a police state, a military dictatorship. In that framework, Drucker's trying to explain how can humans organize themselves to be productive? And how can they do so in a way that they share power with no one becoming a dictator? And he creates uh, his, uh, the concepts of management, the principles of management, has written over 20 books, and is, I think, without any question, the most widely read management consultant in the world today. More, peop more managers have read Drucker than anybody else. Now, he's older now, and there's a tendency to now skip his books and say, well, let's read the latest fad, which I would say is an enormous, it's like sh skipping Shakespeare, and let's read the latest playwright. And I would say that at least two or three of Drucker's books should be permanent in every management school in the country, and at least one of them ought to be in every, every high school, and that's this one. Because the effective executive makes this point. And, and, he, and this is a man, by the way, who wrote about the information age in the 1960s and was more accurate then than anybody who's writing about it now. Because he understood core principles about human beings and how systems work. His point is, every one of you is an executive. The number of decisions, I mean, just think about today. The class is over. How many of you came here by car? Two thirds of you. How far could you go in a day by car? 600 miles? A few of you could go a lot further, but let's not admit that in television. <laughs> Draw a 600 mile radius. Look at that first choice. Second choice, you don't want to go very far today. Well, would you like to go to the movies? 
Would you like to go shopping? If you want to go shopping, there are within 30 miles of here 15 malls. Which mall would you like to go to? In a typical mall, there are four anchor stores and 280 shops. Which shop would you like to go to? Or would you rather go home, stop by Blockbusters, and pick up a movie? There will be about 6,000 titles. Or you don't want to do that, you're going to go by the county library. Or you'd rather go out and play softball. Or you'd rather go hike in the mountains. My point is, you have at your fingertips such an enormous range of resources that you are the first generation in the history of the world in which every person is an executive. Every person is controlling resources on such a scale that you have to think it through and you have to plan it and you have to make it work. And so Drucker's argument is, if you're going to be an executive because you can't, you have to do it. When you go to a grocery store, there, uh, I think it's a, an average Walmart has 100,000 items in it. I think there are some superstores, Publix and Kroger, that now are in the, about the same range. So you go to a grocery store, if you don't have a list, either in your head or in writing, you say, I think I'll shop randomly, which some of you do. <laughs> don't? don't? I was going to say, no. don't feel guilt-ridden. Oh, you looked right at us when you said that. <laughs> I looked at three different groups of people. You're the only one who reacted badly. <laughs> we know a lot more about you. But my, my point's just, what Drucker's trying to do in this little book, and it's, as you know, it's only 178 pages. And what he's trying to say to you is, effectiveness is a set of learned habits. It goes back to why the bell curve is sort of a goofy book. Effectiveness can be learned. It's not a function of being charismatic, and he's very clear in here. It's not a function of being charismatic. It's not a function of being good looking. It's not a function of even being smart. It's not even a function of working long hours. It's a function of knowing what you're doing, thinking it through, doing it systematically, which means you have to learn the habits. And so what I'm going to do, we, we, at one point I started to put up a series of chirons so you could actually read key things. And then I realized I went back and reviewed the book. I had literally, and, and this is an important thing about certain books in life, the, the Bible is another one that fits this. Uh, a lot of books you just read. You go, well, that was interesting. What were the three big points? Then occasionally you run into a book you shouldn't do that. Cookbooks are that way. I mean, imagine you tried to read a cookbook the way you read a novel. And then you tried to remember a recipe. Okay? This is a cookbook for effective life. And so part of my suggestion, I, I, I stopped because I decided what you really need to do is go through here, mark it down, and then go back. And at each point, you need to say to yourself, what does this mean to me? Now, I'll give you a couple examples. But notice that he starts by arguing that this, this is not about managing other people. This is about managing yourself. Now, I cannot tell you in terms of how I became Speaker of the House and done all the different, you know, people say to me, how can you teach a course here, teach part-time at the Industrial College of the Armed Forces, serve as Speaker of the House, represent the 6th District, uh, and, and uh, have a TV show on Tuesday nights? And the answer is this book. This book taught me a quarter century ago how to systematically discipline, plan, think through, delegate, trust others to build a system. 